Hi, and welcome to episode 94 of our Case of the Week series published in partnership with ACEDS. My name is Kelly Twigger. I am the CEO and founder of eDiscovery Assistant and the principal at ESI Attorneys. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'm really happy to be here with you. Uh, one event to make note of before we dive in, uh, the University of Florida eDiscovery Conference is coming up uh, this year to be held February 8th and 9th. Uh, in Gainesville, Florida, but you can also attend virtually. We are back to our pre-COVID status of having roughly 150 to 200 people in person um, and then have in streaming. Our registration figures, I believe, are up in the 3,000 range, so we hope you're planning to join us. Um, Deja will put the link to uh, registration for the UF conference in the comment section of whatever profile you're viewing us on, whether that is uh, LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, or Twitter. Um, also in the either the post or the comment section, you'll find the link to today's decision in the DR Distributors Saga, um, as well as a link to our 2021 case law report. Um, our 2022 report should be out in the next couple of weeks. Um, it will also be distributed as part of the materials for the University of Florida eDiscovery Conference. Okay. Uh, I believe you'll also find a link to episode 93 in uh, the comments as well. All right, let's dive into this week's decision. Um, as I mentioned, this is the latest decision in the saga that has become DR Distributors. Um, in this latest decision, United States District Judge Ian Johnson granted plaintiff's motion to strike DR Distributors expert report after it relied on documents produced after June 1st, 2015, in violation of the court's order of January 19th, 2021. The court also ordered sanctions against DR distributors for the violation of that order, period. Um, facts of this case. Let's go back to a minute, for a minute, to Judge Johnson's decision of January 19th, 2021 uh, on Century Smoking's motion for sanctions. We covered that ruling on two separate episodes of our Case of the Week series relatively early. Uh, those were episodes 12 and 13. Uh, that was a 256-page decision in which the court essentially wrote a textbook on uh, the various bases for sanctions that are available under the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure and his authority on each uh, area. The court also found a tremendous amount of sanctions to be awarded as a result of that motion for sanctions, which he granted. Um, and we covered that episode more recently, I think on episode 71, um, in terms of the sanctions that were awarded was roughly $2.4 million. We are uh, <clears throat> revisiting that order again, because in this current uh, or motion, the judge notes that the language from that order uh, precluded DR distributors, quote, from using any information not disclosed to the plaintiff by June 1st, 2015, close quote. And it precluded defendants experts from, quote, testifying that their opinions would not change had they considered the documents and information not disclosed before June 1, 2015, close quote. That's the language from the order that's at issue on this current uh, motion to strike and motion for sanctions. Now, we are originally before the court here on uh, a motion to strike the defendant's expert report, but it essentially morphs into a motion for sanctions, which is the second motion for sanctions brought by the plaintiff. Uh, Judge Johnson, in this opinion, is decidedly unhappy and very justifiably so. Um, following the sanctions order on January 19th, uh, 2021, for failure to preserve data, DR distributors suddenly identified 20 bankers' boxes of documents that were not produced for or included and covered by the sanctions motion decision of January 19, 2021. Century Smoking, the plaintiff, then filed a second motion for sanctions following the production of those documents. DR distributors responded to the motion for sanctions by including a, a new expert report to allegedly contradict Century Smoking's, quote, unsupported opinions and argument, close quote, in the sanctions motion. That expert report included three opinions, all of which were based on analysis of documents that were not disclosed prior to the June 1, 2015 cutoff as required by the January 2021 order from the court. 
The first opinion in the expert report was a reiteration of an earlier opinion, but the court found that uh, it was still based on new analyses that were conducted on documents that were produced after the June 2015 date. The second and third opinions in the expert report were completely new and also based on an analysis of documents uh, that DR distributors admitted were not disclosed prior to June 1, 2015. The defendant uh, argued that the expert relied only on one log that was produced in March of 2021, still six years after the cutoff date, and a copy of the backup log that the expert found in backup files as part of his initial review. So in essence, the defendants are saying there's really only one a log that the experts relying on that was outside the dates. Uh, Century Smoking uh, responded to the motion to strike and as the court notes, quote, blew a gasket, uh, noting the language of the court's January 19th, 2021 order. So now we have a motion to strike wrapped up in a second sanctions motion and quote, in an effort to stop the never ending filings in this case, close quote, the court combined the two motions. Now, DR Distributors then filed its own motion to strike plaintiff's reply brief or be allowed to file a sir reply, arguing that the reply brief filed by Century Smoking contained new arguments. Um, their brief in support of this new motion to strike effectively acted as a response to Century Smoking's motion to strike. So we've got motion for sanctions, Century Smoking's motion to strike, and then DR Distributors' motion to strike. This ruling from the court resolves all three of those particular decisions. So court's analysis uh, really comes down to looking at the language of the order. And as you might imagine at this point, the cure, court is furious and notes that it has already warned the parties about, quote, frivolous and unreasonable filings that sanctions will be payable to the court going forward, and that DR distributors had not heeded its warnings based on these late filings. Uh, the court then looks at the expert report and defendant's brief relative to his January 19, 2021 order, and states that not only does do the new filings violate the court's 2021 order, but defendant's, quote, attempt to argue the contrary is simply gaslighting close quote. That's my favorite quote of this particular decision. The court goes on to specifically note uh, exactly that the expert defied the order, both by stating that his opinion had not changed based on a review of the new information, but most importantly, that all three opinions were based on an analysis of data produced in late 2015 and early 2016, as well as in March 2019. The court's response, noting that all three dates are after the June 1, 2015 cutoff date and citing Seventh Circuit case law, the court notes that, quote, it doesn't take Captain Obvious to know that this is the direction of time's arrow, close quote. The court sums up its analysis by saying that, quote, defendants and counsel were warned. They had an opportunity to respond. The response was meritless sanctions are necessary, close quote. So we've got a granting of a motion for sanctions. The question is, what is the remedy on that motion for sanctions? Um, the court strikes the expert report that relied on the documents that were produced late and the portions of defendant's brief that also relied on that report. The court then noted that it has both inherent authority and authority under Rule 37B to impose remedial sanctions for violating court orders. Judge Johnson states that the defendant's action of intentionally using information that they were specifically prohibited from using easily, easily overcomes the fault and negligence standards that are required under Rule 37. And then the court evaluates the hourly rate of the court's time in having to review these papers and issue a decision and notes that at approximately $600 an hour and having spent at least 10 hours of time, the court sanctions DR distributors and its counsel jointly and severally for $6,000 to be paid to the court within 30 days. The court closes its decision by saying that sanctions, including monetary, will continue to be entered as needed. Okay, what are our takeaways from this decision? Well, 
uh, the entertaining nature of the DR distributor saga uh, never ceases to amaze me. But in this particular case, um, we really need to focus on, you know, what are the practical takeaways from this decision, from council's behavior, from failing to uh, essentially go along with a court order. So um, the goal of any litigator should be to never have a court refer to your argument as gaslighting. Uh, the term gaslight means to manipulate someone using psychological methods into questioning their own sanity or powers of reasoning. That's not what you want to hear from a federal judge. Uh, there's no question here that the defendants knew that they would be violating the court's order. Uh, we do know that there were some counsel changes uh, during this saga, and that may have contributed. But my guess here is that without an expert report, DR Distributors is facing a much greater cost than any sanctions that could be awarded by the court and was willing to take that chance. That's fine, but you have to understand that as counsel, you've got reputational considerations uh, to be made here. And that is that you've gone before a federal judge, intentionally violated an order, been sanctioned. Uh, this is a client that's been sanctioned multiple times and has engaged in multiple instances of uh, essentially inappropriate behavior with the court. And you've got some serious ethical, ethical considerations uh, to consider here. Um, we'll keep an eye on this case to see whether Saga continues or whether Judge Johnson finally gets some much needed peace in this case. That's our case of the week for this week. Thanks so much for joining me. We'll be back again next week with another decision from our eDiscovery Assistant Database. If you're interested in doing a free trial of our case law and resource database, uh, jump to eDiscoveryAssistant.com and sign up to get started, or you can reach out to us at support at eDiscoveryAssistant.com. Thanks so much. Have a great week.